After 15 years in top end restaurants, Bistro Moncur in Wallara, uh, Claude's in my own restaurant, Bistro Pave in North Sydney, an opportunity came available to look at opening a boutique butchery. And we wanted to be able to serve that food to retail customers that we could buy in our restaurants. So Surrey Hills was our flagship store, basically we opened here five years ago. We found that customers are really passionate about their food, they want to know where the food comes from and how it was grown and the provenance of the product. And also, you know, support our local producers and suppliers, not only meat products but also, you know, the relishes and the chutneys. One of our great breeders who actually breeds Wessex Saddleback pork, for example, will actually grow that to order so a customer can come in and request and when it arrives here in the store, customer knows complete provenance of that product. When we sell a product we want to know how the product was raised, how it was grown. Grass-fed beef for example, eating what it should be eating, grass. And basically what comes out of that is a healthier animal but also we've got better flavour and texture to the meats. Whereas comparing it to for example grain-fed beef, yes it's nice and tender and, and easy to eat and you don't really have to use your teeth to me but it also lacks the flavour. One thing that really people come to Hudson Meats for, the dry aging beef that we dry age on the bone for up to six weeks. So these sort of signature products are only available in the store and you know that's what brings people to the store. Uh, the main difference between dry aged beef is you start off with a whole body of beef such as we have here, which is the rump and loin, that we hang for 50 days. You get to see this sort of beautiful seal on the outside. From there, it'll shrink by about 30%. But what you get out of that is you've got a beautiful fat coverage, which helps protect the meat that's inside there, which is most important. So when you do cut it open, you've got this beautiful red piece of meat that's beautiful and tender. The natural enzymes have broken it all down. The other main thing is it's concentrated flavours, 30% less moisture. It's also quite healthy being grass fed. And also you must remember when cooking dry aged beef that you do cook it less because it's less moisture. And that's the important thing, you can overcook it. But what comes out of it is just the eating quality, the flavour, and it's what meat used to be. Also out there, there's what we call wet aged beef, which means it's been cryvacked, it's been slaughtered and packaged at the abattoir. The main thing is that is because you're for exporting or shipping around the country. Wet aged beef doesn't need to be aged as long. After a couple of weeks, uh, it's ready to sell. The main benefits with uh, wet aged beef is there's no shrinkage in it. So it will retain its flavour and texture from the day it's been packaged over a period of weeks and weeks. What I've got here is a selection of some of the prime cuts of beef. So these are what you call your prime cuts compared to your secondary cuts. Your secondary cuts are all your slow roasting, braising, curry stews, your diced beef, things like that, or off your shoulder, your shoulder blade, bowler blade. What we have here is the fillet steak, which is the most tender cut of beef. It's a muscle that doesn't get used, so therefore it's very tender, but also it doesn't have as much flavour. Secondly, we have the sirloin or strip loin, which is my favourite cut. It's just got the fat on the outside and it's got great marbling as well, especially this piece of grass-fed one here. Thirdly, my other favourite cut is the scotch fillet. It's got a little bit more fat internally, but it's a great barbecue steak. And then fourth we've got here, which is a standing rib roast, which comes off the forequarter, which is the scotch fillet on the bone. It's just a beautiful cut, that's more for roasting as a whole piece and then cutting it. So there's two major different cuts of meat. Primary cuts, which is barbecuing or quick cooking, and the secondary cuts, which are used for slow cooking, braising, roasting, pot roasting. My favourite cut of beef is the sirloin. Uh, one, it's got a nice bit of external fat on the outside. It's also got some nice marbling, and especially the grass-fed because it has more flavour, which is very important, and it's healthier for you, as we spoke about earlier. All meat has to be room temperature, so it cooks even. And that also relates to fish or any other proteins you're cooking. Room temperature is very important. I like to oil and season the meat first, and then place it into the pan. What I like about this pan here is the good high even heat. Here I'm only cooking for one, but more important when you're cooking for two or four people, the steaks are going to cook even and it has an even heat throughout the pan. Now a lot of people sort of say, do you turn it once, do you turn it twice? Today we're going to mark it with the bars on both sides, so I'd probably only turn it twice on each side. Once the meat is cooked to the preferred stage, it must be rested, and rested for about 10 minutes at least. So what you want is the meat to relax, 
retain the moisture and also it's more tender to eat on the palate as well. So you don't want to end up with a puddle of blood on your plate because that means the meat hasn't rested, it's still tight. Right, my steak's been resting for about 10 minutes. So what I'm going to show you is how I know it's ready. I like my steak cooked medium rare. With your index finger and your thumb, just touch them gently. And what we'd like to do is just touch that bit of your base of your thumb there, and that would be medium rare. Go with your pointer finger, that's more medium, medium rare, and then your third finger or your ring finger, that would be more medium to medium to well. It's just a gauge of how it's cooked. So I sort of relate it to the texture or the feel of the meat.